I tell you the truth. One of you is going to betray me. Rabbi, should I? His name is Jesus, son of Joseph, from Nazareth. <laughs> I'll never forget the question I put to Philip that day. Can any good thing come from Nazareth? I didn't say it had before, but those of us that were familiar with Nazareth, such a little insignificant place. Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Is it I, Lord? My name is James, but since many men bear that familiar name, I am called James the Younger, or James the Lesser. Being lesser in size than other men of the same names, since my father's name was Alpheus, I am sometimes known as James the Son of Alpheus. I will never forget the day I first saw the teacher. I was passing down the road near the place where John was baptizing. 
I was curious to see what was going on, so I turned aside for a closer look. Then I saw Jesus asking John to baptize him. John refused, but Jesus insisted. After John had baptized him, the heavens opened up, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in the form of a dove. And we heard a voice from heaven saying, This is my Son, whom I love, with whom I am well pleased. At the end of the first year of his public ministry, he chose me of one, as one of the 12 apostles. And since that moment, I have walked with him and talked with him, stayed with him and prayed with him, trying to learn as much about him and the Father as I could. And now one of us is to betray him? Surely it is madness to think that that, that could be. Surely the betrayer is out of his mind. But I keep asking myself, is it I? Is it I, Lord? Rabbi, is it I? I am Simon, the Zellula. Before Jesus came to me, I belonged to a group of bloodthirsty, hot-headed revolutionaries known as the Zealots. We were all for revolt rebellion against Rome. We believed in crushing our enemies at our heels and reestablishing the ancient glory that was Israel in the days of David and Solomon. Yet Jesus told me of another kind of kingdom, the kingdom of God, where the Father reigns there supremely. Since I heard this, I changed my mind and my allegiance. He has shown me that the greatest conquest of the heart is the only sincere and true lasting conquest. So I gave him my highest loyalty and deepest devotion. I have, in military parlance, unconditionally and completely surrendered myself to him. To think his thoughts, to love as he loves, and to think and love whom he loves, to obey as he obeys, and to serve as he serves. This surrender has not imprisoned me. Rather, it has set me free for the first time in my life. I am not afraid of Rome any longer. Rome is mighty, but God is almighty. Now the master says that there is a spiritual Rome among us, one who would attempt to do by force what can only be conquered by love. Who can it be? Matthew, the publican? The fisherman or his brother? Or does he suspect me since I am the only former zealot among us? Is it I? Is it I, Lord? For some reason, Frontal lied. Maybe there's another meaning behind this. I'm Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter. I'm not a gifted man, but just an ordinary, average man like any one of you. But I've tried to do what I could to serve the teacher with the gifts and talents that I have. The others call me Andrew the Bringer because it seems that all I have ever done is bring someone else to Jesus. I brought my brother Peter to Jesus and I've gloried in the grand, gradual transformation in his life. I found the little lad with the five loaves and the two fish that day when Jesus fed the 5,000. And then just recently, some Greeks came seeking the master. I was called in once more to bring the Greeks to Jesus. He must have seen something of value in me, which the others overlooked, because he selected me to be one of the 12 apostles. I've been very close to the master ever since. I may have not been in the inner circle like Peter, but I haven't been in the outer circle either. I've been a friend and a companion to my Lord. What greater gift could life afford a fisherman? And now, 
one of us is to betray him? It is unthinkable. Who could it be? How could he get away with it in his own heart? Could it be Andrew the bringer? Is it I? Is it I, Lord? <laughs> Rabbi, is it I? I am Thaddeus, one of the disciples whom Jesus called to be an apostle. Jesus chose 12 of us to become the cornerstones of the new kingdom, just as the 12 tribes were the cornerstones of the old Jewish kingdom. I feel unworthy to be numbered among his apostles, but he chose me. I well remember the day. After a night in prayer, he called us to him and gave us authority over unclean spirits and the power to heal every kind of disease and infirmity. Then he commissioned us to go and preach that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He told us to be as wise as serpents and as innocent as doves, since he was sending us out as sheep in the midst of wolves. It is enough, he said, that the disciple be like his teacher and the servant like his master. I was in Jerusalem when he gave the great invitation. Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And now the one who came to take our burdens has a burden thrown upon him the knowledge that one of us will betray him. Which one of us can it be? Who is the traitor? The man we least suspect? Or will all of us betray him before the night is over? Philip and Peter and Judas and John and even Thaddeus? Is it I? Is it I, Lord? <laughs> Rabbi, is it I? My name is Philip. I came from Bethsaida in Galilee. While all of my friends and I were in Bethany listening to John the Baptist, Jesus called us to become his disciples, and all of us turned and followed him. I remember so well before he fed the 5,000 with five loaves and two fish, asking him and others, where are we supposed to buy enough bread to feed all of these people? Little did I know that Andrew was already bringing a young lad with his lunch to Jesus. When the Greeks came to me and asked for an interview with the master, I turned them over to Andrew, who brought them to Jesus. When Jesus began to tell us that God was our heavenly father, it was almost beyond my understanding. However, as I listened to the master, I have grown to understand his words. In fact, I can almost say that he who has seen Jesus has seen the Father. Because everything one wants to find in the Father, I find in Jesus. And nothing I would not want to find in the Father do I find in the Son. And now, having seen the Father through him, he shocks us by telling us that there is a betrayer in our midst. Does the traitor not know that in betraying Jesus... He is also betraying God, that in conspiring against Jesus, he is conspiring against God. Can one of our number be so blind? Who can it be? Can it be Philip? Is it I? Is it I, Lord? Rabbi, is it I? I am Thomas, or Thomas called Didymus, which means twin. While I do not look upon life with gloom and despondency, I usually demand proof before I believe. I want to see before fully committing myself. Yet, I am not a man of doubt, rather, I feel that sometimes I am a man of daring. I recall the day when Mary and Martha sent word to the Lord that their brother Lazarus was dead. Jesus turned to us and said, let's go to him. We knew of the growing oppositions to Jesus, and some of the apostles didn't want to go to Bethany. They shrank from the unseen danger, yet I remember how speaking out and rebuking them by saying, let us go too, so that we may die with Jesus. Why do people remember my doubts and forget my darings? 
Remember the questions and overlook my affirmation, the affirmations. Remember my fear and forget my faith. I used to go fishing with some of the others, and how well I remember the Beatitudes he spoke on the hillside during the first year of his public ministry. And I can almost see him rebuking the winds on the stormy Galilee and healing the sick, curing the disease, opening the eyes of the blind, unstopping the ears of the deaf, cleansing the leapers, and preaching the gospel to the poor. Yet opposition has developed, and his enemies are determined to destroy him. <clears throat> he would make us God's servants, while they would make God their servant. And now he says that even among us, the chosen twelve, there is a traitor. Is he speaking to me? Is he referring to me? Is it I, Lord? Rabbi, is it I? All the others came from Galilee. My home is in the village of Kerion in Judea. Here, I am known as Judas of Kerion, or Judas Iscariot, the only Judean in the group. The others must have had confidence in me because they elected me their treasurer. And Jesus surely must have believed in me because he chose me as one of the 12. Some say that I have appropriated these funds for my own use, and that Jesus' word about the love of money and greed were personally directed at me. Of course, I complained when Mary washed his feet with, with that expensive ointment and perfume. I still think it always waste money. And if I conspired with the chief priests, and I, if I have 30 pieces of silver on my person, that's my business, not theirs. I believe in Jesus, but someone has to make him assert himself as God's Messiah. He refuses to make a move. Well, I've made one. He hints that he knows what I've done. He said so when he washed my feet a few moments ago, but I have my reasons. My soul isn't as black as some may think it is, nor is your soul as white. And what would you do if you were in my place and wanted him to do something dramatic and startling to usher in his kingdom? If you were in his place, what would you do? Should I ignore his remark like the others? Should I piously, self-righteously ask myself, is it I? Is it I, Lord? Rabbi, is it I? I am James, the brother of John. I followed Jesus with my brother after he called us while we were mending our nets by the Sea of Galilee one day with our father, Zebedee. That was about three years ago. We were honored when Jesus wanted us to be his disciples. We were humbled when he chose both of us to be among his 12 apostles. Our mother, Zebedee, I'm sorry, my mother, Salome, was quite ambitious on our behalf and urged us to press our claims upon Jesus. So en route to Jerusalem last week, we met a request of him. We asked, Teacher, grant us to sit one at your right and the other at your left when you come into your kingdom. He replied, You don't know what you're asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I am to drink? or be baptized with the baptism which I am to be baptized. We said, Lord, we're able. Then he told us we would surely drink his cup and we would be baptized with his baptism. But it was not in his power to grant us the right and privilege of sitting at his right and left hand in his kingdom. The others, they were angry when they heard of our request. Jesus then reminded us that he who would be first must be the servant to all, and he demonstrated his words by washing our feet just before the supper. And now, he who had taught us the way of love is to be betrayed by one of those whom he loved? Who can it be? Why should one of us do such a thing? I keep thinking deep down inside my own heart. Is it I? Is it I?
Rabbi, is it I? After John called Jesus and Andrew to follow him, he came to me, John, and my brother James. We were in the boat nearby with our father Zebedee, mending our nets. He called us and we immediately left the boat and our father and followed him. Since that time, I have tried to understand Jesus by loving him. Sometimes I believe he is as much of God as we will ever possess in human life. Yet I love him as a person, and he has returned my love. Sometimes he calls me the beloved disciple. I have shared his trials as well as his victories. I was there on the Mount of Transfiguration, and we were in awe at his glory. Peter and I completed the arrangements for the celebration of the Passover here in this upper room because he has chosen us as part of his intimate inner circle. It was me that he told about his talk with Nicodemus when he spoke these wonderful words. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Someday I want to write down some of his teachings and some of his many wonderful deeds so others may read them and believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that in believing they may have abundant and eternal life in his name. Yet, he just said that one of us was a betrayer. I cannot believe it, yet it must be true, else he would not have said it. Who could it be? Surely not my brother or Peter or Andrew. Could it be John, the beloved disciple? Is it I? Is it I, Lord? Um, Rabbi, is it I? My brother, Andrew, and I were fishing on the Sea of Galilee one afternoon, casting our nets into the sea. When Jesus walked by and said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men, we immediately left our nets and followed him. One morning he said, Simon, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. I said, Jesus, we have toiled all night and we have taken nothing, but if you say so, I will let down the nets. We caught so many fish, we had to summon other nearby boats to contain the catch. When we reached the shore, I fell at Jesus' feet and cried out, Leave me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. But he told us from then on we would be fishing for men. In fact, he even changed my name from Simon to Peter, which means the rock. And when I confessed him as the Christ, the Son of the living God, near Caesarea Philippi, he said, On this rock I will build my church. But not a moment later, when I protested him from going into Jerusalem to suffer death at the hands of the evil men, he rebuked me and said, Get behind me, Satan, so I am a mixture of good and evil, godliness and devilishness. Tonight, when he said that one of us would betray him, I promised to follow him, even to the death. But he warned me that before the cock crowed three times, I would deny him three times. Even though the others call me the big fisherman, in his presence I feel small and unworthy. Will I deny him tonight before the rooster crows? And if I do, what will he do? Will he disown me? Will he deny me? Will he close the door to the kingdom to me? Was he referring to me when he said, one of you will betray me? If I knew who that scoundrel was, I would pierce his heart with the knife I hold in my hand. But maybe it would be my own heart that I would pierce. God grant it not be so, yet I keep wandering and saying to myself, Lord, is it I? Is it I, Lord? I'm not referring to all of you. I know those I have chosen. But this is to fulfill the scripture that says, He who eateth my bread will betray me. <coughs> Verily, truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. Who is it, Lord? Well,
It is the one to whom I give this bread dipped in this bowl. Is it I, Lord? You have said it. What you are about to do, do quickly. <laughs> 